Africa, a vast continent of 54 African countries, including six island nations. Welcome back to the Kim Lib channel. We're excited to jump into a new topic today. Why are parts of Africa still poor? The answer is complex. History, politics, climate, and unfair trade all play a role. Let's bust a myth. Africa's poverty isn't due to laziness or lack of ambition. In fact, studies show African entrepreneurs are among the most resilient and innovative in the world. Blaming poverty on the people is wrong. The real story is resilience, innovation, and ambition. Africa's narrative must change from pity to partnership, from aid to opportunity. Another myth, foreign aid alone can solve Africa's problems. The truth is, sustainable growth comes from investment, fair trade, and empowering local communities. The future will be shaped by Africans themselves, their demands, their ideas, their drive, the world's role. Be a fair partner, not a savior. Global responsibility means changing unfair trade rules and supporting African-led solutions, not imposing outside agendas. The right question isn't why is Africa poor, but what's holding back its potential and how do we remove those barriers? The challenges are real, but so is the hope. Africa's story is still being written. The tank is full, hope is the fuel. And that's a story worth telling and tackle climate change, massive investment in renewables and real support for adaptation. It's not about handouts, but partnership and opportunity. The pieces are clear. Now it's about putting them together. Africa's future depends on action. Africa's youth are driving a tech revolution. Did you know Nigeria has more tech startups than most European countries? Innovation is rewriting the continent's future. At home and globally, the puzzle can be solved. So what's the plan? How do we fix the puzzle? The world must play fair, end harmful subsidies, change trade rules, and give Africa a real chance to compete. Third, transform economies, process raw materials at home, create jobs and build industries. Second, invest in education and health care. Skills and health are the engines of progress. It's a myth that African education is stagnant. In the last decade, enrollment rates have soared, especially for girls. The challenge now is quality and access for all. First, good governance, transparent, accountable, and corruption-free governments that invest in people. Numbers don't tell the whole story. People do. Meet Nora in Mauritania. She started a solar phone charging business in her neighborhood. Isaac in Uganda, a software developer building apps to help local farmers. Maria in Angola, a single mother working hard so her kids can get an education, even as the country's oil wealth passes her by. These are just three out of a billion stories. There are doctors, artists, teachers, and entrepreneurs, people thriving and people struggling. What unites them? They're not one-dimensional. They have dreams, ambitions, and the same hopes as anyone else. Africa's story is about real people, not stereotypes. When we talk about Africa, we're talking about them. The future is being built by their hands. Let's see them for who they are. It's not all doom and gloom. The Africa of today is bursting with progress. Child mortality is down. More kids, especially girls, are in school. And access to health care and clean water is up. The mobile phone revolution has transformed daily life. Services like M-Pisa let people bank, pay, and borrow with a phone. Tech hubs in Lagos, Nairobi, and Kigali are driving innovation. Apps for farmers, health, and business. A growing middle class is fueling new markets, from shopping malls to restaurants. Creative industries are booming. Nollywood is a global film powerhouse, Afrobeats tops charts, and African fashion is on runways worldwide. This progress isn't because of foreign aid. It's the result of local hustle and creativity. Market women, software developers, and doctors are building the future. Growth is uneven and challenges remain, but the momentum is real. Fact, six of the world's 10 fastest growing economies are in Africa. The narrative of hopelessness is outdated. Growth is happening even if unevenly. Africa is not waiting to be saved. It's moving forward. 
the world just needs to catch up to the real story. Picture the world economy as a supermarket. Africa brings raw materials, cocoa, coffee, copper, but gets paid little. When it buys back finished products, the price is sky high. Many African economies are stuck exporting cheap raw goods and importing expensive finished ones. The real profit is in manufacturing, but most factories are elsewhere. Wealthy countries protect their own farmers with subsidies, making it impossible for African farmers to compete, even at home. Imported chicken can be cheaper than local chicken. How is that fair? Trade rules enforced by organizations like the WTO make it hard for African countries to build their own industries. Countries like South Korea protected their industries and climbed the ladder. Africa is told not to. The system blocks prosperity. For real change, the rules need to change. Africa needs a fair shot. Trade barriers and subsidies in wealthy countries cost Africa billions each year. Leveling the playing field could unlock massive potential. At the global market, climate change hits Africa hard, even though the continent contributed the least to the problem. Droughts, floods, and unpredictable weather are daily realities for millions. Farmers can't rely on the seasons. Crops fail, families struggle, health suffers too, diseases spread, water becomes scarce, and competition for resources can turn violent. Africa has huge potential for solar, geothermal, and hydropower, but lacks investment. Rich countries promised help, but progress is slow. Climate change multiplies every challenge. African nations are leading in climate adaptation. Innovations like drought-resistant crops and solar microgrids are models for the world. Africa is on the front lines fighting with limited resources. After independence, politics got messy. Some leaders were visionaries. Others saw power as a way to get rich. Corruption. Money for hospitals and schools ending up in private pockets. Crippled development. This isn't just an African problem, but in struggling countries, the impact is devastating. Instability followed. Artificial borders led to civil wars, fighting over resources, and decades of lost progress. When a country is at war, everything stops. Schools, farms, businesses. Even after peace, rebuilding trust takes generations. But here's the shift. People are demanding better. Social media, protests, and elections are holding leaders accountable. Countries like Ghana and Botswana are showing what's possible with good governance. Governance is improving. More countries are holding free elections and fighting corruption, setting examples for the region. Great time. The fight isn't over, but the referees, the people, are blowing the whistle louder than ever. The demand for honest leadership is growing. Change is slow, but it's real. The future depends on leaders who play for the home team. To understand today, we have to talk about colonialism. European powers drew borders on a map, splitting communities and forcing rivals together. The goal? Take resources, rubber, diamonds, gold, and ship them out, not build local economies. Railroads connected mines to ports, not cities to each other. When independence came, countries inherited broken systems. Few trained leaders, economies built on one or two exports and deep divisions. If the price of cocoa dropped, a whole nation could collapse. These weren't just bad breaks, they were structural disadvantages. The legacy of colonialism is like starting a marathon a mile behind with your shoelaces tied together. Political instability, economic fragility, and ethnic conflict often trace back to these artificial borders and extractive systems. It's not an excuse. It's the foundation everything else was built on. Understanding this history is key to understanding the present. The shadow of colonialism is long, but it's not the whole story. Today's challenges are rooted in yesterday's decisions, but the future isn't set in stone. The path forward is clear. Invest in people, support local innovation, and build fair partnerships. Africa's future is bright if the world listens and acts. You turn on the TV, sad music, a fly, a serious voice. For the price of a coffee, you can save Africa. That's the image we're sold. A single sad story for a whole continent. But simple stories are never the whole story. Africa isn't a country. It's 54 countries, each with its own history, culture, and economy. Lumping them together is like saying all of Asia is the same. 
Some African countries are thriving with booming tech scenes and growing cities. Others face real challenges. The story of poverty in Africa is a tangled web. History, politics, climate, and global trade all play a part. Imagine trying to build a Lego castle with half the pieces missing and someone keeps shaking the table. That's the reality. A complex puzzle, not a single problem. In this video, we tried to untangle those wires. No boring lectures, just a real conversation. We tried to look at the roots of poverty, the impact of history, the challenges of politics, the effects of climate change, and the rules of global trade. But we'll also spotlight the progress, the innovation, and the unstoppable spirit you never see in those commercials. Africa's story is not just about struggle, it's about resilience and transformation. So let's get past the stereotypes. Let's talk about the real Africa, the one with superheroes, love stories, and epic comebacks, the one that's rewriting its own narrative. Ready for a new narrative? We appreciate you for joining us on Kim Lud in this deep dive video about Africa puzzle. I hope you will see Africa's story in a new light by watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Remember that Africa's future isn't being written by outsiders. It's being shaped daily by the diverse African population, including those from the diaspora, all contributing to their homeland. See you in the next video. Thank you for tuning in. You've been watching Kim Ludd Media.